Unit 17. Past Events. Page 66. 2. Let's listen. Frank is describing what happened to him on Sunday. Listen and number the pictures. 1. My boss invited me to his birthday party on Saturday night. 2. I thought I'd better take him a nice birthday present, so I bought him a really nice tie. 3. When I got to the party, my boss's wife met me at the door and invited me inside. 4. Then I went in. All my friends from work were there. 5. I heard my boss's voice behind me as he came out of the kitchen. 6. I turned around to say hello, and guess what? He was wearing exactly the same tie as the one I had bought him. Page 67. 3. Let's listen. Task 1. People are talking about things that happened to them. How do you think each person felt? Listen and check the correct answer. 1. Some friends and I were in the elevator going up to my apartment when suddenly the elevator stopped between floors and wouldn't move. 2. I went to the airport to pick up my boss. I was so nervous that I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. When I got to my car, I realized I had left my briefcase on the floor in the arrival terminal. Gee, with my boss there and all, I felt so stupid. 3. I was in bed in the hotel half asleep when suddenly I smelled smoke. Then I heard the fire alarm. 4. I wanted to go sailing, but just as I arrived at the lake, a storm broke out and it started to rain. It wasn't a very strong storm, but it was much too cold for sailing. 5. I was driving down Pleasant Street yesterday. I was singing along with a song on the radio and probably wasn't paying as much attention as I should have been. All of a sudden, a dog ran out in front of my car. I couldn't believe my eyes. 6. Last weekend, I went out on a date with this beautiful woman from my history class. We were at this really nice restaurant, and when the bill came, I realized that my wallet was missing. I guess it fell out when we took a taxi to the restaurant. I didn't know what to do. The bill was really high. Page 67. 3. Let's listen. Task 2. Listen again. What do you think each person did next? Circle the correct answer. Page 68. 4. Let's listen. Task 1. People are talking about past events. What happened to them? Circle the correct answer. 1. It was a pretty bad snowstorm, and the roads weren't in very good condition. I guess I was driving a little too fast, and I went into a skid. I couldn't control the car at all. I went off the side of the road and into the snow. Luckily, the car wasn't damaged, and I wasn't hurt, but I couldn't get the car to move. I just had to stay in the car and wait. Finally, after about half an hour... Someone in a big truck came by and pulled me out. 2. Yeah, it was pretty scary. We ran into a bad storm and the plane was really bumped around. The passengers were pretty scared, and of course, all the kids were screaming and crying. It only lasted for 10 minutes, but those 10 minutes felt like an hour. I don't know how the pilot got the airplane out of that storm, but he finally did. And the rest of the flight was perfect. 3. All I wanted was to get the newspaper. You know how some hotels leave it in front of your door? Anyway, I stepped out of the room to get it, but the door shut behind me. I tried to open it, but it was locked. And my key was inside the room. I was wearing just my pajamas. Luckily for me, someone from housekeeping came by, and she had a key. 4. 
We were staying in this hotel in Thailand when there was a fire. I was so scared when I heard the fire alarm go off. I got out of the hotel as quickly as I could. The hotel was badly damaged, and some people lost their clothes and money. In the end, though, we were lucky. No guests or staff members were injured. 5. I was out shopping with a friend, and I saw some kids selling raffle tickets to raise money for a charity. It was for a really good cause, so I bought a ticket. I didn't think much more about it, but in the end, I won first prize. It was a good prize, too. A weekend trip for two to Las Vegas. 6. I was at a restaurant with my wife when this famous rock star sat down at the table next to us. I couldn't believe it. I wanted to ask him for his autograph, but my wife said I should let the man have his dinner in peace. In the end, when my wife was in the restroom, I asked the waitress if she would ask the rock star to sign my menu, and believe it or not, he did. Page 68. 4. Let's listen. Task 2. Listen again. Are these statements true or false? Check the correct answer. <music> Unit 18. Vacations. Page 70. 2. Let's listen. People are discussing vacations with a travel agent. Which trip do they prefer? Listen and circle the correct answer. 1. Well, if you like the beach, the sun, and the surf, you might consider our Hawaiian vacation package. Or we can also arrange a trip to a beach resort in the Philippines. Well, I've been to Hawaii a couple of times, and I always enjoy it. But I've never been to the Philippines. I think that would be fun for a change. 2. If you like snow, we could book you at a ski resort. We have some great vacation packages if you like skiing. Or, for a warmer vacation, we can arrange a jungle trip to the Malaysian National Forest. It's very popular. Well, I've just bought some new ski equipment, and I'm dying to try it. I have to say that I'm not too keen on the jungle trip. I just hate all those insects. 3. I'd like to do something really different for my vacation this year. Well, here are a couple of possibilities. How about a trip down the Nile River? Egypt is wonderful this time of year. Or maybe you'd like to spend a week in the Australian outback. Hmm, they both sound interesting. But I guess I'd prefer the Australian trip. The Nile River might be just a little too exciting. 4. I'd like to do something exciting this vacation. I don't want to just lie around on a beach. How about whitewater rafting down the Colorado River? It takes you right through the Grand Canyon. That's really exciting. Or we could send you on a 10-day African safari. That's also very popular. The safari trip would be great sometime, but I only have one week. I think I'll go for the Grand Canyon trip. 5. We have a couple of trips you might be interested in. One is our Southeast Asian trip. You go to Thailand, Singapore, and Indonesia. The other is our tour of China. China? I've never been there. I hear it's fascinating. I've already been to Thailand and Indonesia, so I think I'd like to visit China this time. 6. Let me tell you about a couple of trips that might interest you. We have a two-week tour of Europe. It's a bus trip. You travel in nice, comfortable motor coaches. Then we also have a train trip across Russia. Oh, I love trains, and I've never been to Russia. I'm not too fond of bus trips. I get sick in cars and buses. Page 71. 3. Let's listen. Task 1. People are talking about their vacation plans. Will they visit these places? Listen and check the correct answers in the charts. 1. I'm so excited about my trip to Asia. I've never been there before. First, I'm flying to Singapore from the U.S. 
I'll be spending three days there because I hear that there's a lot to see and do. I'll also be spending three days in Seoul. I hear the nightlife there is great. Then we go from there to Hong Kong. I'm planning to do lots of shopping there, so I hope two days is enough time to buy everything I need. I would really love to go to Beijing for a few days, but unfortunately, this tour doesn't go there. After Hong Kong, we'll end up in Thailand for five days, so I guess I won't be able to get to Tokyo or Malaysia on this trip. Oh well, I have to save a few places to visit on my next vacation. Two. Well, our trip starts off in London. We've got a week there. We will also take the bus up to Oxford for two days to see friends. We also wanted to get to see Cambridge. I hear it's beautiful, but we won't have time this trip. Anyway, then we head to France. We have five days in Paris, which will give us time to see all of those museums. I wish we were going to spend a few days in Germany too, but this trip doesn't include it. But we do go to Switzerland for three days. I'm really looking forward to that. Then we end up in Italy for the last five days of the tour. Three. We start off in Los Angeles. We're going to stay there for three days because we want to hit the beach and see the sights. We're not going to go to San Francisco this time because we've been there before. Then we're off to Denver to visit my sister. We're going to stay there for a week. I hope that's enough time because I haven't seen her since last Christmas, and we have so much to talk about. We were thinking of going to Chicago after that, but we just don't have time. So it's straight on to Washington D.C. and New York. We've got two days in Washington and three in New York. We'd really love to get up to Boston for a couple of days, but it probably won't happen. Maybe next time. Page seventy one, three. Let's listen. Task two. Listen again. How long will they stay in each place? Write the correct answers in the charts. Page seventy two, four. Let's listen. Task one. People are talking about vacations they want to take. What does each person want to do? Listen and circle the correct answer. One. After graduation, I'm going to fly to Europe and spend a couple of weeks traveling on my own. I'll be in Germany and France mostly. There are so many things I want to see and do: museums, restaurants, clubs, cafes, all that stuff. I know my parents worry about me traveling alone, but I just prefer it that way. I guess it's because I want to be free. On those group tours, everything is planned for you. Two. I'm taking a trip to New Zealand. I hear it's really quiet down there, and the people are really friendly. I want to go to small towns that don't get a lot of tourists. Then I could just check into a cheap hotel and do my own thing. I'm really looking forward to this trip. I guess it's because I need to go somewhere quiet. The city where I live is very noisy, and the people are rude. Three. When I'm in London, I want to see as many plays and concerts as I can. I also want to go to all the big museums and art galleries there. I'm going to go dancing as often as I can too. Basically, I want to see and do everything. I really want to make the most of the week I'll be there. I guess it's because I need some excitement. My life has been so boring this year. Four. I'm going to go to Thailand this winter. I don't want to spend any time in Bangkok because I've been there before. This time, I just want to relax on a nice, quiet beach. I can swim and snorkel every day if I want to, but I don't have to do anything. I just want to relax. I guess it's because I've been so busy at work recently. Five. I'm spending a month in Mexico. It's going to be great. I don't want to spend any time in Mexico City, though. There are too many tourists there. Instead, I want to go to one of those small old colonial towns. 
I guess it's because I want to practice my Spanish. I studied the language for three years in college, and I think I'll get to use it a lot more in a small town. 6. My friend and I are going to Australia. It's perfect for us because Australia has a lot of cheap hotels for backpackers. They're great places to meet young people and travelers from all over the world. I'm really excited about this trip. I guess it's because the beaches are great there. I heard the east coast of Australia has some of the best surfing in the world. Page 72. 4. Let's listen. Task 2. Listen again. Why do the people want to take the vacations they describe? Write the correct letter. <music> Unit 19. The News. Page 74. 2. Let's listen. These are the beginnings of news reports. What kind of reports are they? Listen and circle the correct answer. 1. The stock market in New York suffered heavy losses today. U.S. exports declined for the third month in a row. 2. Fifteen people were injured in a collision between a tourist bus and a truck on Highway 27 this morning. 3. Police are investigating the theft of a diamond necklace worth $30,000. The necklace was stolen from the Serena Department Store on Saturday. 4. Over 25,000 people turned out last night at Flushing Meadows to watch the finals of the U.S. Open Tennis Tournament. 5. 75,000 fans of singer Elton John were disappointed last night. His free outdoor concert at Central Park had to be postponed because of heavy rain. 6. A severe storm caused traffic to come to a stop on all major highways. The airport was forced to close down most of the morning. Page 75. 3. Let's listen. Task 1. Read these newspaper headlines. Then listen to the news reports. Are the headlines correct? Check the answer. 1. A fire destroyed the famous President Hotel last night. Firefighters helped all the hotel guests escape safely from the building, although some people lost their clothes and luggage. Firefighters say the fire probably started in a guest room, possibly because a guest fell asleep while smoking. 2. Government health officials have closed down Ocean Gardens, a well-known local seafood restaurant. More than 10 people came down with food poisoning after eating at the restaurant last week. The officials say that the problem was probably caused by the water in the restaurant's fish tanks. 3. A group of Japanese students was rescued yesterday after being stranded for 10 days in the Australian outback. The trouble started after a vehicle the students were traveling in broke down. Their radio wasn't working either, so the students had to survive by eating snakes, insects, and berries. Luckily, the students are all in good health. 4. Rock singer Jimmy Wilde didn't arrive for his concert last night, disappointing over 80,000 fans. A representative of the singer said that he was sick, and the concert would be rescheduled for next month. No one knows exactly what Jimmy Wilde's illness was, but sources say he probably had a sore throat. 5. Coast Guard boats are searching for a fishing boat with a crew of four, which has been missing for two days. Shortly after the boat left land, it ran into a very bad storm and sent out a message for help. The Coast Guard thinks that the boat probably sank during the storm. 6. And this just in. Bai Yoon, the giant panda at the city zoo, has finally given birth to twin cubs. Zoo officials are delighted at this event, since pandas are very rarely born in zoos. Right now, the baby pandas are very small, about the size of a mouse. 
Page 75. 3. Let's listen. Task 2. Listen again. Are these statements about things that actually happened or things that probably happened? Check the correct answer. Page 76. 4. Let's listen. Task 1. What are these news reports about? Listen and circle the correct answer. 1. As a result of the heavy rain over the weekend, city officials fear there may be a flood. Many people living near the river have had to leave their homes. Over 30 families are now homeless. Most of them are staying with friends and relatives. Volunteers work throughout the weekend to place sandbags along the river. 2. Over 20,000 people so far have visited the National Museum to see the collection of works by the popular Colombian artist Botero. That is the largest number of visitors the gallery has had for several years. This is the first time that Botero's work has been shown in this area, and the collection includes some of his best-known paintings and sculptures. 3. Several hundred people are fleeing their homes in California because of a forest fire burning out of control only a few kilometers away. The fire began five days ago. Hot weather, wind, and a very dry summer are helping the fire spread very quickly. Firefighters have come from as far away as Alaska to help put out the flames. 4. A customs official at Kennedy Airport was very surprised yesterday when he checked the baggage of a passenger and found over 50 live snakes, some of them very poisonous. The government believes that the passenger was planning to sell the snakes in the U.S. illegally. They would have been worth up to $1,000 each. A few snakes escaped from the suitcases, but airport officials say that all of them were caught within an hour. 5. A protest by over 5,000 farmers caused major traffic jams downtown yesterday morning. The farmers were in front of the federal building to demand lower taxes on meat and agricultural products. They say that the high taxes make it difficult to earn enough money for their families. Later in the day, government representatives promised to study their demands. 6. A spokesperson for two of the country's largest airlines, Northern Airlines and Air International, has announced that the two airlines are discussing a possible merger for next year. If the merger goes ahead and the two companies combine, it could be bad news for travelers. Many business experts think that the new company would raise ticket prices. Page 76. 4. Let's listen. Task 2. Listen again. Are these statements true or false? Check the correct answer. <music> Unit 20. Opinions. Page 78. 2. Let's listen. People are expressing opinions. What is the topic of each opinion? Listen and circle the correct answer. 1. I think it's a great way for people to develop pride in their country. It can make people feel good about themselves and their team, and I think that's a very positive thing. 2. Well, the problem with it is that it doesn't help develop a country. It brings in a lot of money, sure, but the money stays in the hands of a very small group of people. 3. I don't mind them, because many of them are really very entertaining. Also, you get to know what new things are available. 4. I can't see anything useful in it. It's just a huge waste of money. I mean, can you see any point in trying to find out if there's life out there? 5. Well, if anyone is crazy enough to try it, let them. Who in their right mind would want to jump off a high bridge with just a rope tied around their legs? 6. Well, they are great company, especially for people who live alone. 
Having one helps you relax, and I read somewhere that it can even lower your blood pressure. Page 79. 3. Let's listen. Task 1. People are giving opinions about these topics. Are they for or against them? Listen and check the correct answer. 1. Well, space exploration is pretty expensive, but I think it's worth it. Why is that? Well, that's how we learn more about the universe we live in. That's pretty important, isn't it? 2. There are way too many commercials on TV these days. They really make me mad. Oh, yeah? Why is that? Because they always interrupt my favorite TV programs. Some of those commercials are really long. 3. I think the Olympic Games are great. I can't wait for the next ones. Really? Why? Well, they encourage an interest in sports. They also help bring about better international understanding. We need more of that. 4. Every city needs lotteries, I think. Why do you think that? Well, because they can raise money for the city. They're a much better way of raising money than taxes. 5. Well, action movies might be fun, but I don't think they are really good for young people. Really? Why do you say that? Because they are way too violent. I never let my kids watch them. 6. If you ask me, people in this city shouldn't be allowed to have those big dogs. How come? Because most apartments are too small for a big dog. They don't have anywhere to play. Page 79. 3. Let's listen. Task 2. Listen again. What reason does each person give? Circle the correct answer. Page 80. 4. Let's listen. Task 1. People are giving their opinions. Do they agree? Listen and check the correct answer. 1. I think more attention should be given to studying foreign languages at school. Don't you? Sure. Absolutely. I think students should be required to learn Spanish. It's easy to learn, and it will help them get better jobs. 2. I think lawyers have the best jobs in the world. What do you think? I'm not sure I agree. It's true that lawyers make a lot of money, but they also have to work really hard. 3. The programs on TV these days are the worst. Even with a hundred channels to choose from, everything is terrible. You're right about that. I think it's because most TV programs are written for teenagers. There's nothing for older people to enjoy. 4. Have you used the bus lately? It's awful. I know. The last time I took the bus, I had to wait for an hour for it to come, and the driver was really rude. 5. Do you ever use the Internet to buy things? I've started using it lately, and I love it. How about you? Well, I don't know. I'd rather shop at stores. Shopping on the Internet is fast, but I like to try things on before I buy them. 6. I'm telling you, this rainy weather is driving me crazy. I hate it. I understand how you feel, but I'm actually glad it's finally been raining recently. You see, it's really good for my garden. Page 80 4. Let's listen. Task 2. Listen again. Are these statements true or false? Check the correct answer. <music> Unit 21. Famous People. Page 82. 2. Let's listen. These conversations are about famous people. Listen and circle each famous person's job. 1. Hey, Lisa, are you free Thursday night? 
some friends and I are going to see the new Halle Berry movie. Oh, I didn't know she had a new one. She's so beautiful. Didn't she win a bunch of beauty pageants when she was younger? Yeah, she did. And she's so talented, too. She's the first African-American woman to win the Academy Award for Best Actress. Yeah, that was really exciting. Two. Tony, how's it going? Not bad. I've been reading about Gandhi. Oh, yeah? He helped India become independent, right? Right. It's interesting stuff. He inspired so many people. But did you know he started out as a lawyer? No, I had no idea. So when did he become such an important leader in India? Not until he was in his 40s. That's amazing. 3. You look tired today, Nick. I know. I was up all night reading the new Stephen King novel. He's the one who writes those horror stories, right? That's right. And haven't they made a lot of his books into movies? Yeah, like Carrie and The Shining. They're really good, and the books are even better. And really scary, too. This new book is giving me nightmares. 4. How's it going, Amy? All right. I'm writing a research paper on Leonardo da Vinci, so I've been spending a lot of time in the library. Oh, yeah, I know him. Isn't he that guy who painted the Mona Lisa? Right. He also did a lot of other great paintings, and he was a scientist and an inventor, too. 5. Hey, Josh. Is that a Bob Marley poster? Yeah. Do you like his music? I sure do. He made reggae music famous all over the world. I love that song of his called No Woman, No Cry. Have you heard that one? Yeah. I've got a great version of it on this concert video. Do you want to watch it sometime? 6. Hey, Jen, do you know where Albert Einstein was from? I need it for this crossword puzzle I'm doing. Well, he's from Germany originally. That's where he discovered the theory of relativity. It completely changed the study of physics. Yeah, I know. I just thought he was American. No, but he lived in the United States for a long time. He taught science at Princeton University. Page 83. 3. Let's listen. Task 1. People are discussing the life of the actor James Dean. Did these events in Dean's life happen in Indiana, California, or New York? Listen and check the correct answer. Good evening and welcome to tonight's edition of Legendary Lives. Our subject this evening is James Dean, actor and hero for the young people of his time. Edward Murray is the author of a new biography of Dean. Good evening, Edward. Hello, Tina. Edward, tell us what you know about Dean's early life. He was born in Indiana in 1931, but his parents moved to California when he was five. He wasn't there long, though, because his mother passed away just four years later. Jimmy's father sent him back to Indiana after that to live with his aunt and uncle. He was pretty active there. He played baseball and basketball, rode horses, and played ice hockey. He used to ride his motorcycle all over the farmer's fields, speeding and chasing cows. So how did he get into acting? Well, first, he acted in school plays at his high school where he won a drama award. He also won art and sports awards in high school, and a speech contest, too. He went to college in California, and that's when he got seriously into acting. He did modeling for advertisements and appeared in some TV shows. In 1951, he moved to New York to do more stage acting. In fact, he won an award as Most Promising Newcomer for 1954. Well, when did the movie career really start, then? 1955. His first starring role was in East of Eden. It was fabulous. James Dean became a huge success. But the movie that really made him famous was his second one, Rebel Without a Cause. That was about teenagers who felt like they didn't fit into society. So how many more movies did he make? Just one more. Then he died in that car crash in California in 1955. 
He loved driving fast. In fact, he was driving his Porsche on his way to take part in a car race when he died. What a tragedy. He only made three movies. So what made him the legend he still is today? Well, I guess his looks, his acting ability, his short life, and maybe the type of character he played in his movies. Many young people saw him as a symbol of American youth. Page 83. 3. Let's listen. Task 2. Listen again. How did James Dean become famous? Number the events from 1 to 6. Page 84. 4. Let's listen. Task 1. This person is talking about the life of the South African leader Nelson Mandela. When did these events happen? Listen and write the years. Nelson Mandela, the first African president of South Africa, was born in 1918. Both his elementary and high school education took place at schools run by a church. His father was an assistant to an important African chief, and as a young boy, Nelson often helped his father. While he listened to people telling the chief about their problems, Mandela decided he wanted to become a lawyer so that he could help his people with their struggle for freedom. After high school, he studied for a bachelor's degree in law. In 1942, he started his political life by joining an organization called the ANC. ANC stands for African National Congress. Over the next few years, he and other members of the organization worked hard, and the ANC became a powerful national movement. It fought against the laws of the South African government, because these laws made life difficult for black people. Even though most of the country's population was black, the people who ran the government and had all of the power were white. The ANC encouraged people to resist the government in a peaceful and nonviolent way. Mandela became deputy president of the ANC in 1952. He was now an important leader of black South Africans. As a lawyer, he helped poor people stay on the land where they lived, instead of being forced to move to areas where the government wanted them to live. He also fought against laws that said that black and white people could not live in the same areas or go to the same schools. During the early 1960s, the government began watching Mandela carefully, and he was soon arrested. He was sentenced to life in prison in 1964. He was not released from prison until 1990. Even while he was in prison, he inspired people in his own country and others all over the world. After he was released, Mandela continued to try to achieve the goals he had set almost 40 years earlier. In 1994, he became the first democratically elected state president of South Africa. He remained president until he retired in 1999. Today, the world remembers him as South Africa's best-known and best-loved hero. Page 84. 4. Let's listen. Task 2. Listen again. Are these statements true or false? Check the correct answer. Unit 22. Food and Nutrition. Page 86. 2. Let's listen. People are talking about their eating habits. What does each person eat now? Listen and check the correct picture. 1. I never pay attention to my diet. I eat whatever I want. There's nothing I like more than a big, juicy steak for dinner and chocolate cake and ice cream for dessert. Yum! 2. I'm trying to cut down on cholesterol, so I've stopped eating eggs, cheese, and red meat. I'm eating a lot more fish and chicken. 3. I'm trying to put on weight. 
Everyone tells me I'm too thin, so I started eating a lot more meat and dairy products. It's great. Now I can go out as often as I want for hamburgers and milkshakes. Four. I've got a real sweet tooth. I love chocolate, candies, and things like that. But I know it isn't healthy, so I've given all that up. Now the only sweets I have are fruit. Page 87. 3. Let's listen. Task 1. A doctor is talking to her patients about nutrition. What advice does she give each person? Listen and circle the correct answer. 1. Well, from what you've been telling me, Mr. Grant, it sounds like you're already eating more vegetables. That's good. But you should definitely eat less cheese. It has a lot of sodium and fat in it. That might explain why your cholesterol level is so high. 2. I'm glad to hear that you've been eating fish more often, Linda. It's much better for you than meat because it has a lot less fat in it. It will probably help your high blood pressure, too. Now, you should also try to eat more fresh fruit, too, especially oranges and bananas. 3. Well, Chris, I think it's great that you've been eating a lot of vegetables. I see you've been having fruit with every meal, too. That's excellent. But you say you've been feeling tired and weak lately, so you should eat more meat. 4. Miss Barton, I'm wondering about all the bread you've been eating. I know you need to lose weight, and sometimes eating a lot of bread makes that very difficult. So I'd like you to eat less bread for a few weeks. Otherwise, your diet seems pretty well balanced. You're eating meat, but not too much meat, as well as a lot of fruit and vegetables. 5. You're right, Mr. O'Brien. You're definitely losing too much weight. It's probably because you haven't been eating meat. Now, even if you don't eat meat, you still need protein. Why don't you try eating more eggs and cheese? They've got a lot of protein. I'm sure that will help. 6. Well, Mrs. Johnson, you said you've been eating a lot of candy and chocolate. I know we all love sweet things, but chocolate can be really bad for your skin, especially when you're under stress. That's probably why you have this skin problem now. I suggest you stop eating chocolate for a few months. Instead, eat more fruit. Page 87. 3. Let's listen. Task 2. Listen again. What is each person's health problem? Write the correct letter. Page 88. 4. Let's listen. Task 1. This person is giving a talk about cheese. Are these statements true or false? Listen and check the correct answer. Cheese is one of the world's oldest foods. It was made by the ancient Egyptians over 3,000 years ago. It is a valuable food since it contains fat, vitamins, and protein. It is used both as a food itself and in many different types of cooking. There are hundreds of different types of cheese around the world, but they are almost always made from the same thing, milk. Cheese is made from several different kinds of milk, including cow, sheep, and goat's milk. Most cheese in the United States is made from cow's milk. Cheese also contains water. A soft cheese, like brie, contains more water than a hard cheese, like Parmesan. Cheese is produced through a process called fermentation. The process of making cheese was probably discovered by chance. Ancient people used to make bags using the skin from an animal's stomach. When they used these skin bags to carry milk, bacteria from the animal's skin reacted with the milk to begin the fermentation. The result is cheese. Today, cheese making is a very scientific process. First, the milk used in cheese is pasteurized, which means that it is heated to remove all bacteria. Then, specially cultivated bacteria, called cultures, are added to the milk. The milk is kept fairly warm during this period to help the cultures grow. As they grow, 
The bacteria cultures sometimes release bubbles of carbon dioxide. These bubbles help make the holes in Swiss cheese. Next, as the milk ripens, it forms a solid substance. This substance is called curd. The curd is removed, and the water is drained from it. The curd forms the basis of the cheese and may be treated in different ways. Finally, once it is matured and dried, the cheese is ready to eat. Page 88. 4. Let's listen. Task 2. Listen again. How is cheese made? Number the steps from 1 to 5. Unit 23. Predicaments. Page 90. 2. Let's listen. Listen to the conversations. What is each person's predicament? Circle the correct answer. 1. You know, I'm in an embarrassing situation. I've got a house guest staying with me. He's been here a while, and I don't know when he's going to leave. Do you think I should ask him? Yes, I would if I were you. 2. One of my best friends borrowed five dollars from me and seems to have forgotten to repay it. I'm too embarrassed to remind her. I don't think it's worth mentioning it, do you? No, it's only a small amount, isn't it? But next time, make sure you don't lend her anything. 3. This guy at work is always inviting me out, and I really can't stand him. It's so embarrassing. Do you think I should tell him I don't like him? Oh, I wouldn't. You'll get the message eventually. 4. You know, this friend of mine is always borrowing things from me. One week it's my camera, and the next week it's my stereo, and she always forgets to return them. Do you think I should refuse to lend her anything else? I certainly wouldn't lend her anything. 5. Oh, guess what? My friend invited me to his graduation party, and I completely forgot about it. Maybe I should tell him I wasn't feeling well. Yeah, that's probably the best thing to do. He would probably be pretty annoyed if he knew you just forgot it. 6. You know I have these real nice neighbors. The only problem is they have this dog that barks whenever they go out. It's driving me crazy. Do you think I should say something to them about it? Why not? I'm sure they wouldn't mind. Page 91. 3. Let's listen. Task 1. People are telling stories about predicaments that happened to them. Listen and number the pictures. 1. I was looking at some dishes in the department store yesterday when I dropped and broke one. I thought for sure they'd ask me to pay for it, but the clerk was nice and said I didn't have to. 2. I went out for dinner last night at this Italian restaurant. When I checked the bill, they had charged me for things I hadn't even ordered. I talked to the waiter about it. He apologized and said I didn't have to pay for the things I didn't order. In fact, he gave us the whole meal for free. 3. I had a date with my girlfriend last night, but on the way there I got stuck in traffic. I got to the movie theater nearly half an hour late. She was annoyed with me and said she doesn't want to go out with me anymore. 4. A funny thing happened to me yesterday. This girl came up to me on the street and thought I was that famous actor Tom Cruise. She even asked me for my autograph. I wasn't really sure what to do. Finally, I didn't want to disappoint her, so I went ahead and signed Tom Cruise's name. I hope I did the right thing. 5. When I got home on Friday... All my friends were waiting inside my apartment. They wanted to have a surprise birthday party for me. Unfortunately, my apartment was a mess. Can you imagine how I felt? We had to spend a half an hour cleaning up before we could start the party. 6. There was this guy who sat behind me in class. I'm sure he cheated whenever we had a test. He was always looking over my shoulder. I didn't know what to do about it. Finally, I asked the teacher if I could sit in another part of the classroom. I felt a lot better after that.
Page 91. 3. Let's listen. Task 2. Listen again. How does each story end? Circle the correct answer. Page 92. 4. Let's listen. Task 1. People are talking about predicaments. How does each person feel? Listen and circle the correct answer. 1. My brother-in-law is okay, but there's one thing he always does that I can't stand. Oh, yeah? Every time he comes to our house, he goes straight to the refrigerator and helps himself to something to eat. The other day he finished two sandwiches that I was planning to have for lunch. No way! Yeah. At first I didn't want to say anything, but now I've decided that I'm going to speak to my wife about it. 2. Do you know Charles, that guy in our computer class? Sure, I know who you mean. Have you noticed his breath? It can be pretty awful sometimes. I'm surprised someone hasn't spoken to him about it. But I guess it's an awkward thing to mention to someone. Right. I know what you mean. Hey, maybe I should send him an anonymous note about it. That's a nice way of handling it, don't you think? It sounds good to me. 3. My aunt is staying with us this week. My parents gave her the bedroom right next to mine, and she snores very loudly. It's impossible to sleep at night. You mean it's that loud? Oh, it's horrible. And when I told my parents about it, they didn't help me at all. That sounds frustrating. You bet it is. I guess I'll have to sleep in a different room while she's here. That way, I won't hear the noise. 4. Did I tell you that Lisa borrowed some money from me? She got in a traffic accident, and the repairs to her car were very expensive. How much money did you lend her? A thousand dollars. Wow. Has she paid you back yet? Not yet. She's waiting for some money from the insurance company. I'll just wait until she gets it. It's no big deal. I trust her. 5. My cousin is acting weird these days. He's depressed, and he talks to himself all the time. He probably needs to see someone about it, maybe a psychologist or something. You sound pretty worried. I am. I'm going to talk to his parents about it. I don't think they're aware of the problem because they don't see him very often. 6. Do you know that when I got home from work today, that guy next door had parked his car in my parking space again? Really? I thought everyone was supposed to park in their own parking space. They are. You know, I hate having problems with my neighbors, but this is the third or fourth time this has happened. I'm going to call the building manager and ask him to do something about it. Page 92 4. Let's listen. Task 2. Listen again. What is each person planning to do about the situation? Write the correct letter. Unit 24. Global Issues. Page 94. 2. Let's listen. People are talking about issues. Which issue do they think is most important right now? Listen and circle the correct answer. 1. Well, the government has done quite a bit to reduce air pollution. It's certainly better than it used to be. Now we have to do something about water pollution, which is still pretty bad. 2. Crime is a growing problem in the country right now. Sometimes it's because people are unemployed. I think what we really have to do is reduce unemployment. That should help the crime problem. 3. The subway and bus service has definitely got to improve. But the government should really focus on improving conditions for people in the cities. So many people need better places to live, and the problem is getting worse. 4. Unemployment is not as big a problem as it used to be. 
but most of the new jobs are for unskilled workers. We need to spend more on education so that we have a better educated labor force. Five. These days there are enough jobs for almost everybody who wants to work, but getting to work is another story. We need better highways and a new subway system to make it easier for people to get to work. Six. There has been a decrease in deaths from most common diseases. Unfortunately, AIDS is a growing problem, especially in the cities. Page ninety-five, three. Let's listen. Task one: What issues are these people talking about? Listen and circle the correct answer. One. I grew up around here, and the river has always been really polluted. Industries were dumping all sorts of chemicals and waste into the water, so the river really smelled bad. You wouldn't even think of swimming there. Well, I decided to do something about it. My neighbors and I wrote a letter to the mayor asking him to force these industries to clean up the river. I really hope the government listens to us. Two. Over the last few years, we've been having much hotter summers and warmer winters. When I was a kid here, we used to have a lot of fluffy white snow on Christmas. Now we don't get that, and there hasn't been much rain for a couple of years. I guess this is the effect of that global warming I keep hearing about in the news. That's why we've decided to move to Chicago. There's plenty of snow and rain up there. Three. When did the world get so crazy? That's what I'd like to know. For years, I thought everything was fine. Now all I read about in the newspaper is countries fighting each other and dropping bombs and explosions and terrible things like that. You know what I did about it? I stopped reading the newspaper. Now, whenever I want to read something, I just pick up one of those sports magazines. No bad news in there. Four. It's almost impossible to get across the city in less than an hour and a half during rush hour. There are too many cars and vehicles on the roads. There are only two freeways, and they just can't handle the traffic. The only thing that moves quickly in this city is the subway. That's why I took an apartment right next to the subway station. Five. One of the biggest problems we face is garbage. Where can we put it all? In the past, everything used to get buried in giant landfills, but in many countries today, the landfills are full and there is no room to start new ones. That's why I started recycling my garbage. I do it every week. It's really the only solution. Six. In the future, everyone will have to live in giant high-rise buildings if they want to live in cities. These new buildings might be a hundred stories tall or more. If cities keep getting bigger, the only way they can expand is upward. I can't stand crowded cities myself. That's why I moved to a small town in the country. Page ninety-five, three. Let's listen. Task two. Listen again. Are these statements true or false? Check the correct answer. Page ninety-six, four. Let's listen. Task one. Listen to a talk on very large cities or megacities. Why do people move from the country to a megacity? Listen and check the reasons you hear. In developing countries, more and more people are moving from the country to the cities in order to find work. This is because in many countries. It is often no longer possible to make a living as a farmer. The result of this movement is the development of what are sometimes called megacities. These are huge cities with populations of up to 15 million people. People who move to megacities usually believe that cities have many benefits to offer. They believe that there are more jobs available and that salaries are much higher than they are in the countryside. They think there will be a lot of new, affordable housing to choose from, and of course, 
These people are attracted to the exciting, glamorous image of the big city that they have seen on television and in movies. They even expect to live longer and healthier lives in cities because the health care is better there. But in reality, life in these megacities is not always as good as people hope. Jobs are often difficult to find because many of the people who move to the cities have little education and few job skills. As a result, there is a huge supply of unskilled workers to choose from, so salaries are very low. Housing can also be a problem. Many people end up in huge, crowded slums on the outskirts of these cities, and their families may become sick because even though the health care is better in the cities, it is also much more expensive. The growing population of megacities causes many other problems for city governments. Air pollution increases, for example, as does crime. Getting rid of garbage is extremely difficult. There is not much space available for public parks and gardens. And as these cities continue to grow, these problems will become even more difficult. Page 96. 4. Let's listen. Task 2. Listen again. Are these statements true or false? Check the correct answer. This is the end of CD3.